I want to talk about how the Jameson Williams stuff affects the draft because I mentioned it in the the first part of the show. And I think this is like being forgotten about is like the Detroit Lions are down another wide receiver before being down Jameson Williams. Like when we lost DJ Charker for agency, I feel like the conversation was like, cool. It's, I mean, like it sucks, yeah. but like a lot of the fans were saying we got Jameson Williams. Makes sense. All right, cool. Jameson Williams showed some promise last year. Boom, six game suspension. You're now going down DJ Chark and Jamison Williams. Right. Do Detroit Lions need to address the wide receiver position in the draft now? Is this yeah, I, I, I think they do. And, and, but I, I wouldn't go as far as to say take one at 18 because I, you could still get a Jalen Hyatt, which I like a lot. Uh, there's other wide receivers and A.T. Perry. Like, there's a couple options you can get mid-round that I think would be viable. Uh, maybe have Nathaniel Dell. I don't know. There's a lot of options. For me, I'm not willing to say 18, Quinton Johnston. I, I think there's two players, and, and we always bring up scenarios, especially um, on the Morning Woodward Show when we talk about it. I'm sure you guys do here on the heavyweights. There's so many different ways the Lions can go in this. I would prefer two defensive players or a quarterback in a defensive player. That's the route I'm going. I'm out on, you know, wide receivers at 18. I would even take Bijan at 18. I've said that before because I believe he's just a weapon. But I, I wouldn't go as far as to say they got to take one now in the first round. I'm not going to hit the panic button. Jamison's coming back after six in his role. What he was supposed to do will resume then. So I don't think it's time to panic. It's not like Jamo's now cut. He's never coming back. Uh, but yes, they have to at least look at some options. You can't run out there with, you know, Marvin Jones and Amon Ra and say, all right, boys. Let's go conquer the world. Like you're, you're going to need at least one more addition. I think they'll do it mid rounds, not not in the first round. I'm with you to it, and, and like to the point of the Detroit Lions, like drafting a wide receiver. I don't even know if they necessarily like revolved around the situation with Jamison Williams. I think it was a conversation we've been having for the Detroit Lions along with DJ Chark's departure. Like we've kind of been talking about like, hey, why not go grab another wide receiver? Right. We've kind of, I mean, at least me personally, I've liked the idea of Jalen Hyatt, especially. I think he's a big body guy with some speed. Guess what DJ Chark was? A big body guy with some speed. Like that's I think we were already kinda like looking at those types of prospects. I don't think the Jamison Williams suspension necessarily like magnifies that as a need for you. It's again, it's only six games. You have Jamison Williams on a what, four years still remaining on this deal because you get a fifth year option with him. Yep. Like some people may say it may affect the draft. I I don't I don't know. Booner, do you think they need to address the, the wide receiver position a little bit sooner now or what? I, I've said it before. I think it would if you address it. I like kind of like the second round or later. Mm -hmm. Like I, I mentioned it. I told you the other day. Like a Jalen Hyatt, if he's available in round round two at your pick, that that's who I would go. But eighteen, it's a hard pass. Would you? Would Would you take one in eighteen? Like and pass over? You know, uh, one of the corn. You know, one of the. I guess I don't want to even know if you class rhyme is like a top tier corner, but mm -hmm. whoever. No. I, I like some of the corners that'll be there. I think there'll be good some good options yeah, yeah, at eighteen. Yeah. So no, I, I don't think so. I mean, JSN is is the one guy, but I think he'll be gone by then. Exactly, he's too good. At exactly. least he should be. And, mm -hmm. You know, we'll see, but he should be. Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't necessarily like no, not at eighteen. I, I, I did like Quentin Johnson for a long, long time. Not a long time, short time, honestly. But yeah. I, I did like the the idea of him as a prospect for the Detroit Lions, but. No, not at 18. This is just too early. And, and to be honest with you, like, yeah, Brad traded up for Jamison Williams. Jamison Williams is more than just like a wide receiver. Like, I, I'm just like you. I'm, I'm, I don't like the idea of drafting wide receivers in the first round, but Jamison is much more than that. He's got that speed, mm -hmm. the game can't breaking teach speed can't yeah, that teach you it. can't teach. And it clearly has an effect in the league when you look at guys like, uh, who got, honestly, Deshaun Jackson has stayed around the league for a very long time mm -hmm. because of his speed. You look at Tyreek Hill, undersized. Be able to be looked at as a number one wide receiver, although some people think of him as a, a slot wide receiver. But still, like pound for pound, and you look at the numbers, he's one of the best. Some people may even say the best, and it's because of his speed. Like speed kills, and so J Mo is a little bit different when they moved up and made the trade for him. But I, I'm cool. With, I, I think wide receivers should be taken later on because there's uh, so much more evidence of wide receivers being great in later rounds. As a matter of fact, there's one on this team right now, Amon Ross St. Brown, fourth round pick for the Detroit Lions. Right. That's just that's just how it goes. Terrell Owens, I believe, is a late round pick too. You know what sucks too about the just talking about losing DJ Chark and now JMO is where's your speed? Like, mm -hmm. like you just lost DJ Chark, a four three five guy, and now you just lost a dude who hasn't ran a forty, but we'd assume it's probably four two, yeah, four two ish. Like that sucks. That's why Jalen Hyatt, these options that you bring up, yeah, you're gonna have to bring in some speed, man. Like, I love Amon Ra, but he's not the fastest guy. He does a lot of things really well. And Marvin Jones at this point is. You know, he never was a burner, but he, at the, even at this point, he's he's a shell of himself. I mean, he, he can give you something, but as a wide receiver, too, on a team that we expect to make a playoff run, like, yeah, you, they're going to have to come up with something. But I think we can all expect playoffs. it. They, even before the JMO suspension, I would have hoped they would at least take a wide receiver at some point. So now this kind of just 
lets him know, like, hey, you're definitely going to have to take a wide receiver. Yeah, I think heading into this draft, obviously the idea of Jameson Williams being there for you in your football team for the fall season. It's only six games. Right. But I think I was just kind of open to anything either way. I was down to, to if Brad Holmes. I mean, I have that much faith in Brad Holmes that, like, if he took any position. And I even – before – beyond the faith of Brad Holmes, like, what he did in the free agency market this year allowed him freedom in this draft. It, it liberated him to, to kind of decide whatever the hell he wanted to do. If he wanted to grab another wide receiver, I would have been cool with it. If he wanted to grab B. John Robinson, I would have been cool with it. If he wanted to grab a science Torrance, I mean, maybe not as cool with it, but, I mean, I – I can, I can see it. Like, yeah, I wouldn't yeah, be exactly. furious with it. Yeah. I can draw – you know, point A to point B on that one. Yeah. Uh, quarterback. It makes sense. Yep. So, like, I was already there with this draft class either way just because how much – how f- he was so fucking sick of free agency, man. Everything that was – was defense, defense, defense. Everyone wanted to draft defense, defense, defense. Mm-hmm. Well, he hits free agency. He goes defense, defense, defense. Like, it's <laughs> – he can do what he wants in this draft. And if he takes a wide receiver, I don't want anybody to correlate that to Jamison Williams. And like you said in the first segment, too, I don't also want to – I want to pull the brakes in the – I don't want to hear any bus talk about Jamison Williams. It's ridiculous. I, and I, I want to stay from that, like, weird, like, toxic shit because, like, I don't want to be that guy. I'm supposed to be up here and, like, give you, like, an analyst, like, a non-biased take. Although, I will always be biased against the Bears. Fuck the Bears. Actually, I picked the Bears to win against the Detroit Lions with you last time. We did a show together. We, you, I we don't, did. Uh, did you have to bring that up? Yeah, you're right. You're <laughs> just right. forget about I admit that. losses. I admit losses. I don't do that. Move on. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. But, but you're right. But I don't want that toxic thing that kind of like – that I feel was surrounded by Killian, that I feel was surrounded by Jeff Okuda to where like they almost fucking hate it here. Sorry you dropped the hard F-bomb like that, but like – why would an athlete want to be here? These fans are constantly just hating on them for every single thing they did. Mm-hmm. Jamison Williams, people were hating on him. He didn't show up to camp. He didn't show up to camp. I'm OTAs, I apologize. Trying to bash him for that. Bash him about the Jared Goff stuff. Although, maybe, you know, he probably should have been a little bit more respectful in that situation. But, yeah. like, people I feel like are just so quick to, like, attack this kid. And I, this is another reason to do that. I, I want to stay away from that. I, I don't want him to hate Detroit. I want him to continue to love Detroit because that's, I feel like that's when players like flourish, when they love the city. Same way we want to put on for Dispo because we went there and we had a good-ass time. And you're like, damn, like, yep. I fuck with this sponsor. I, I really want to put on for Dispo. These guys, they take care of me. I want them to win. And, and I think a lot of that JMO narrative had to come from the draft, dude. Like how he looked when he was drafted, that, that was a big conversation. Oh, JMO doesn't look happy. He's a lion. But a lot of that's just his personality. Like I think JMO would even agree with this if he's been here and kind of – understands the city and how it moves if jmo plays well you're not ever gonna have to buy an alcoholic drink in the city again like like the city will embrace you so for jmo it's about just showing up and being available he hasn't done that yet but i don't think it's fair to to, to pull out a bus card or be he's on bus to watch like it's that's quite frankly a, a you're jumping to conclusions way too early before you even see J- jmo i mean even for him to not really be involved at all like you have a very small sample size every time he's touched the ball key word touch the ball he has it in his hands it's gone for 40 yards so like yeah there, there's a pretty good sample size there uh it's small sample size but good production there we yeah. just need more we need to see more of jmo that's a big thing just him being available but again He's young. I hate using that excuse, but this this is a big. It's kind of like the Jalen Carter thing I always bring up, and it's not the same type of severity of situation. But this will show his character. If he's able to learn from this, he will be fine. And again, his agency came out with that statement. You know, he he, he understands. He doesn't want to. You know, he doesn't want to ruin the integrity of the game. It, it, he understands now. I, he should have already, but now he does. Jamo's going to be fine. I'm not too concerned at all about his future, yeah. his character. Like, all this stuff is just pointless argument to me. Just a talk. Like, it, it, yeah. it's I'm, – I'm okay. Yeah, Everything's going to be fine. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And that, that, that's my fear, though, is like – and again, I'm, I, my fear is actually he's not like the elite wide receiver prospect that we're saying he's going to be. I'm not saying I, I think that's the case, but if he's not, I just, I just don't want to hear the, the bullshit from fans. And then he'd be, he'd be passed on. There's, you know, not want to give it all his ears, not even want to be here. Like he is, a, he's a coveted player. That's why the other two guys, gone. Finito, in the words of Jeff Ifrey's ancestors, they, they got cut. Mm-hmm. Jamison Williams still here because he's worth keeping.